Hi, my name is Charlie and I study here at Durham University. I study archaeology and history. Um, I'm right outside the lovely cathedral right now and I'm going to be taking you on a kind of tour of the colleges here at Durham. We have 16 or 17 colleges. I don't really know. Um, I mean, I should know. It's either 16 or 17, I can't remember. There are five on the kind of bailey. So there's the castle, which is in front of me now. Then on the bailey, we have Hatfield, Chads, Johns, and Cuts. <laughs> Cuts is my college, why did I forget that? And then there's the rest on the hill. And um, the hill is on South Road, which is kind of near to the science site. And then there's kind of like two which don't fit either category. So Ustinov, which is a kind of postgrad college, which is in Neville's Cross. And then Hildbead, which is kind of just a bit in the middle of nowhere, to be honest. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of these colleges today. Firstly, let's start with University College, or as most students like to call it, Castle. Now, Castle is the oldest college at the university, with the castle being established well before the university. The castle was actually given to the university when they first started. Since then, it's become notorious as one of the posh colleges around Durham. You'll likely find people wearing red chinos there and having holidays in the south of France. Whilst it might seem like you'd be living your dream life, in a castle. Not everyone gets to live in the castle, although they do have a really nice bar called the Undy. Castle is a catered college, which means the food is cooked for you, and they have gowned formals as well. Next, let's start moving down the Bailey and we move to Hatfield. Hatfield is probably the most hated college among anyone else who lives in Durham. The reason for this is the stereotype of Hatfielders being naturally just stuck up. Granted, not everyone in Hatfield is stuck up for sure. Fun fact, you can only actually enter Hatfield Bar if you're wearing a barber jacket. That isn't actually true, but it definitely could be. <laughs> no, but Hatfield has a catered accommodation as well as gowned formals. Hatfield was also the second college to be founded to actually provide an alternative to Castle for, for the poorer students. Which is ironic seeing as most of Hatfield is known for being quite wealthy. Next we move on to Chad's. Chad's and John's make up two of the independent colleges here in Durham, which means they're not owned by the university but they operate within it. It's a weird system and I don't truly fully understand it because I'm not part of Chad's or John's. However, Chad's is a relatively small college situated right opposite the cathedral in a prime location. Quite honestly, they have one of the nicest bars in the whole of Durham with a glass-like conservatory feel and it's honestly just amazing. <laughs> They're also catered and they also have gowned formals. Chad's is also the smallest college in Durham, so if you want a quiet area on the Bailey, it definitely makes all a good location. Next we have John's, St. John's, whatever you want to call it. John's is also one of the unaffiliated colleges and also another really small college, which is roughly equal in size to Chad's. People in John's are known for being very religious, they have their own church outside of the college. And one amazing fact about John's is that they have free laundry and no other place in the university offers that, so if you want to save on laundry costs, because P.S. they cost a lot, then definitely consider John's as a great place to go. Finally, the last college on the Bailey, and obviously the best, is Cuths and Cuths is my college. It is an absolutely wonderful college. Cuths actually has two sites, one on the Bailey at 12 South Bailey and one at Parsons Field. I was actually in the Parsons Field site for my first year. Everyone in Cuths, their stereotype is known to be kind of laid back, quite chill, but outgoing and fun. Cuths actually has catered and self-catered accommodation. So catered is on the Bailey and self-catered is over at Parsons Field. And with two sites, it also means the Cuffs has two bars. Formals aren't gowned, so you don't have to wear a gown, but you can if you want, but no one really does, which makes it one of the best colleges on the Bailey for kind of a laid back vibe. Next, let's move up the hill and let's start with Grey. People in Grey are often known as Grey by name, Grey by nature. Grey sits literally right off the science site. So if you're a science student, you can literally like roll out of bed and you can be in your lectures in like two minutes. Food in Grey is catered and they hold formals that are gowned. They're also one of the best colleges for sports coming in third last year. Next, let's move up the hill to Collingwood. Collingwood is known as the sporty college. I think they've won every single intercollegiate 
college sport tournament for the last 10 years. Collingwood's a great place to give sport, however, they do have the largest college, so it would kind of make sense to be the best at sport. I do love their mascot. Their mascot is a stag which sits overlooking Collingwood as a whole. Plus, Collingwood has an astroturf and some cricket nets. Collingwood is catered, but they're not gowned for formals, so if you want a more laid-back vibe, Collingwood is definitely a great college to consider. Also, they definitely have one of the best bars on the hill, if not the best, in my opinion anyway. It's, it's amazing. After Collingwood, we have Josephine Butler, which most students will call Jobo. Jobo is known to lie at the top of the hill. Jobo does have this really cool mole hill kind of thing. This is what people call the top of the hill up at Jobo. With Jobo behind me and then Steve over there. Cathedral in that direction, as well as John Snow in the south. Probably can't hear me. The whole of Jobo is actually self catered, so if you really want to make sure that you are self catered, Jobo is a great option for you. And their formals are gowned. Just next to Jobo, there is Stevenson, also known as Stevo. Much like Jobo, Stevo is all self catered, although their formals aren't gowned. I don't really know a whole lot about Stevo, although they were one of the colleges that moved over from the old campus down at Stockton. So you could say that sometimes people forget about Stevo. It's not the most memorable college out of them all, but if you want a bit of peace and quiet tucked away at the top of the hill, Stevo is probably a great college to go to. Next, let's cross over South Road to John Snow. John Snow, I think, has been totally rebuilt. So they've got a brand new site next to South College. They're actually going to share this hub building with South. John Snow is also self catered and they have gowned formals. Just next to John Snow is South. South College is actually brand new for this year. So if you're looking for some absolutely brand new facilities, and a clean slate to start traditions on, then South is a great college. They have brought in new people to be your kind of freps, so there are people in South College who are in the years above, but they have transferred from other colleges. South is a fully self-catered college and they will have gowned formals. Next, let's go to Aidens. Aidens is tucked away at the top of Windmill Hill, and it honestly just sounds really idyllic. They have a great view of the cathedral from there. And honestly, I don't really think many people go there in the first place. So I've never actually been to the college bar. Like, I, I didn't even know really where it was, to be honest. But they do have a really nice place. Although, they do have a courtyard which looks a bit like a prison. So if that's your vibe, then sure. <laughs> but no, Aidens does seem like a really lovely college. It is surrounded by wildlife. Although it is up like 80 steps from other colleges. Aidens is fully catered and their formals are not gowned. After Aidens, we have Van Mildert, also known as just Mildert. They are known for having a lake literally right outside their college. I can't say it's a nice lake, but it is a lake. Mildert is also one of the larger colleges here at Durham with fully catered accommodation and formals that aren't gowned. From what I know, they have a quite a nice common room area um, with pool tables and stuff, although I'm not a big fan of their bar. It's normally relatively empty, apart from when a bit of football's on. Next we have the Hexy College, or Trevs, Trevalin, whatever you want to call it. I normally just go with Trevs. It's actually kind of funny, so the whole of Trevs is made to look, and I quote, like a modern castle. I honestly don't know what castles they've been looking at, but they definitely need to get their eyes checked. Although they do have a nice looking gym from what I can see. Apparently one of their college drinks is called a screaming orgasm. Don't quote me on that. They are catered accommodation and they also have gown formals at Travis. Mary's is our next college which also sits at the bottom of the hill next to the science site. So if again you like to sleep in and you have 9 a.m. on the science site then Mary's is a brilliant college. I also have to say that Mary's is one of the most picturesque colleges. It has a fantastic view of the cathedral and it just looks grand. One thing I love about Mary's is I asked what its college mascot was and someone told me, and I quote, a griffin or something. 
but in recent years, someone's just slapped on a meerkat costume and called it a day. Now, in all honesty, Mary's is lovely apart from their bar. Their bar is where the loveliness stops. And no wonder there's something called the Mary's Challenge, which is where you put a shot in your mouth, you don't swallow it, and you've got to run from the bottom of the hill in Mary's to Cuths. And if you make it, you complete the Mary's challenge and you're no longer in Mary's bar, which is probably quite a good thing. <laughs> but they have catered accommodation and gown formals. Well, that's it for the Hill Colleges and the Bailey Colleges, but there are two outliers, which I said in the beginning, Hillbead and Eastmill. So let's go to Hillbead. Hillbead lies to the north of the city, but really not that far away from anywhere. Although saying that, everyone does say that Hillbead is kind of out the way and you'll get lost if you go there. Although Hilby does seem like a bit of a, like a maze when you go there. Well, it has great views of the river and the cathedral, which I really love. It is catered, but the formals aren't gowned. Finally, we have Ustinov, Ustinov, whatever you want to call it. And this is a postgraduate college only. So I think you've got to be at least 21 to apply there and you've got to be doing postgrad. Everyone calls Ustinov just old, for like they're pensioners, they're just really old, but in fact, most people there are probably like 21 to 30, like they're not old. <laughs> but they're located down in Sheraton Park in Neville's Cross and their building actually looks really nice, like I'm actually quite jealous. But they are fully self-catered, there's facilities there to kind of like share with a partner and I feel like they're more inclusive than kind of the other undergraduate colleges in terms of other circumstances that you may find yourself in later in life and their formals are not gowned. But anyway that makes up the college tour so I hope you have enjoyed this, I hope this has been useful. If this has helped you then please feel free to leave a like down below, subscribe if you want to see my journey in Durham for the second year and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.